Woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus Woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus Woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus Hallelujah 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 Welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Watertown, Minnesota. This is our prelude as we're waking up for singing and praying today in the house of the Lord. Singing and praying with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Singing and praying with my mind. Stay Welcome to Worship here at Trinity. My name is Pastor Jeff Engholm. Grateful to be here with you today. Also grateful that Hannah Rossold is here helping to lead by singing and playing the shaker and all, bringing all the things that she brings. And glad that you're bringing all the things that you bring to this worship service today. If you found us on Facebook, feel free to go below, make a comment, click one of those buttons. Let us all know you're here as a part of this online community. And if you found us on YouTube, through our website, just know that we're grateful that you are here as well. If you'd like a bulletin for the service this morning, just go to trin.org, right there on the front page, where it says online worship. Click that, it'll take you right to a bulletin. You don't have to have that for today, but if you want to follow along with the songs and the readings, you're welcome to do that. We are continuing on through the Easter season, even though Easter was a few weeks ago, we're still celebrating, and we're still celebrating by this greeting. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Yes, the Lord is still risen, and among us, bringing new light and life. We celebrate that on this day, and we continue on with this celebration with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved through faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We sing together, Kyrie eleison, which means, Lord, have mercy. Open your gates wide to receive all your children into the heavenly kingdom. Help us to be vehicles of promise and proclamation for all who will listen, so that every soul might live in your grace. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Acts chapter 13 and 14. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, and Saul, also known as Paul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. In Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. And Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowds that saw what Paul had done, they shouted, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to follow their own ways. 
Yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, the crowd scarcely restrained from offering sacrifice to them and sent them off. This is the word of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God Almighty, the source of faithful living and changing lives. Amen. Here's a question. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Think about it. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Think about your favorite superheroes and what they can do. Superman, Iron Man, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Batman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, and all the rest. Think about them. Actually, when I was a kid, I kind of liked Popeye as my superhero. You know, the guy who got his super strength from eating his spinach. Well, anyway, if you could have just one of their superpowers, what would it be? Would it be flying? If you had a superpower, would you want to be able to fly? Or maybe it would be strength, you know, super strength. Maybe your superpower would be super speed. Or maybe you'd like to be able to be invisible. Yeah, think what you could do if you could be invisible. And then, after all that, Think how people would respond to you, react to you, notice you with your super power. they think you're pretty big stuff, wouldn't they? Well, because you would be pretty big stuff if you could do what nobody else could do. Now jump with me into today's reading. It's a story about having superpowers. Paul and Barnabas were visiting a town far away, far from home. Nobody knew them. They were not among their own people who knew them, but among strangers and foreigners who didn't know them, didn't know anything about them. Paul and Barnabas were just passing through this foreign place when they came upon a man who couldn't walk. In fact, the man had never walked in his entire life. But when Paul looked at him, he could see that he had a deep faith. And so he simply said to the man, Stand up right on your feet. And the man did. What a great story of Paul using his superpower of healing. Well, you might think, Except this story is not about that. This story isn't about Paul using his superpower of healing. This is a story about the crowd around him and his friend Barnabas. And how the crowd around him and Barnabas reacted to this miraculous healing. The crowd <coughs> is applauding them. The crowd is praising them. The crowd starts throwing flowers at them and bringing in animals so they can offer a sacrifice to them because they think Paul and Barnabas are gods sent from above. Except that they're not gods, of course. Paul and Barnabas aren't gods sent from above. They're just ordinary human beings that were sent by the God above. But they don't have any superpowers at all. Or do they? When I asked earlier about having superpowers a few minutes ago, I talked about all the obvious ones we usually think of. Super speed, super strength, and all the rest. But what if those aren't the only superpowers there are? What if there are others? Some years ago, when I was serving a congregation in southern Minnesota, 
A young mom named Kelly was a member of that congregation. She was bright, friendly, outgoing, a faithful member of the church. When I first got to town, I met her and her family, and soon after, she introduced me to another person in the church named Doug. Doug was older. He was in his 80s. He had lived in the area pretty much all his life. And he had recently been diagnosed with a fairly aggressive form of cancer. Quite frankly, by the time Kelly introduced me to him, Doug was confined to his bed, unable to speak. Well, he... He, he was dying. And through it all, Kelly was a steady presence in his life. Now, you might think that I'm telling this story because of Kelly and what she did for Doug and how she had some kind of, you know, superpower about being so attentive to Doug's needs. But that's not what this story is about. This story isn't about Kelly's superpower. This story is about Doug's superpower. Yeah, Doug, who was dying, homebound, unable to speak. You see, shortly after Doug died, I was at the house with his, with his widow. She showed me a note that Kelly had written to him after one of her visits before he died. The note said this, Dear Doug, thanks for the visit yesterday. Whenever I come to visit you, I love seeing your bright eyes and your smiling face. Whenever I am down, your visits always cheer me up. Thank you so much. Kelly wrote that about Doug. Yeah, it's true, I suppose, that maybe Kelly did have a superpower in her way of connecting with Doug, but Doug clearly had a superpower too. A cheery smile, bright eyes, <clears throat> even at the end, when he was dying and could no longer speak, even then, he was able to brighten someone's day. Can I ask my question again? Although this time let me rephrase it. I don't want to ask a fantasy question. If you had a superpower, what would it be? I want to ask a real question. What superpower do you already have right now? What superpower do you have right now? And what superpower do you see in the people around you? Because yes, you have one. And so does the person beside you. No, you can't fly, you can't turn invisible. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something stronger than that. I'm talking about that thing that you do that only you can do. The thing that you bring that only you can bring and no one else can do it quite like you. What's the superpower that you have that makes you unique, different, special, one of a kind? And what's the superpower that you see in someone else that makes them unique, different, special, one of a kind? Is it a smile like no other? Is it a look that is like no other? Is, is it a way of talking, laughing, crying, thinking, working, wondering, creating that is like nobody else? I'm guessing that you've never imagined people around you having superpowers, let alone you yourself having one. But you are wrong. You do have a superpower along with those around you. Just like Paul and Barnabas, 
You see, the superpower that they did have wasn't in the healing of the man who couldn't walk. The superpower they had was simply in realizing that the power they had wasn't their power at all. It was the power of God at work in their lives. They knew that they were just vessels through which God was working. But that's no small thing. They could have caved in to the cheers of the crowd around them, but they didn't. Instead, they helped the crowd know and understand that they were witnessing God's power. And they helped them know that God's power was available to all. So what's your superpower? Through the power of God that's been given to you. What's your superpower? I know you have one. And I know that God is at work in you through your superpower, bringing light and life to this new day. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's time now to share the peace here. We do that by smiling and waving and greeting those of us who are here online and whoever you're with there, out there, whoever's with you now. Smile, wave, and greet them, and I'm smiling, waving, and greeting at you and you, and also you right there, hidden away there in the corner. Yep, thanks for joining us here today. Don't forget, not just now, but later on, please share God's peace, light, and life with anybody you see. Let them know that they have superpowers in the power of God. We're also receiving an offering today. I just want to say thank you for all the financial support you continue to share with us here at Trinity both on site and online. If you're curious about any of that, just go to trin.org slash give, and you can continue to learn how you can be the generous people that you are. I just want to say thank you for all the ways you support the ministries here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Watertown, Minnesota. Of course, it's not just our financial gifts that God calls us to share with each other, but it's our entire lives as we re uh, remember in the singing of this song. Gracious Lord God, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is the Lord of life and is alive. Increase in our bodies, minds, and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may Almighty God, Creator, Christ, and Comforter, keep you in God's light, God's truth, and God's love, now and forever. Amen.
please serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you for joining us here today. We'll see you next Sunday again, 9 o'clock, either online here, however you found us, or on site in person. If you're in the neighborhood, feel free to stop by here next Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, on site or online. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. In the meantime, stay calm and stay connected and shine on. All our Bye.